Well, hello, folks. How's everybody doing? Welcome to Pizza Town, Lower Saco Cobbequid. I am Sean McKenna, host of uh, Room Shots with Sean, brought to you by Barstools of Band Talk. And I have, this is a kind of a part two of last week. Uh, yeah. The one, the only, Mr. Wayne Spear. So, Wayne, I was on the Wolf's Den that aired today. Yeah. A lot of fun. And now uh, we're doing the same thing with Wayne here. We thought we'd do it at, uh, at Pizza Town. It's been a while since we've actually gone on location and, and done uh, this. I think the last one was Capital Sports Bar with myself, wow. and Eddie, and you, and Maurice. Maurice, so cool. and, yeah. and some guy that yeah. we don't know about anymore. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so Wayne, welcome. Hi, buddy. How's she going? Oh, man, it's going. Be good. So what we'll do, too, is uh, as we get going, if anybody has some questions, Way maybe we can do that, but the Wolf Stand now is into how many how many years how many seasons have you been doing it? Seven. Seven. So my first question is: I did uh, a minor sports show in the CIOE. It lasted six years, and I was always struggling to find content. It was always hard to try to find people. And you would think it, it, the first year wasn't too bad, uh, but it got to a point where it was very hard to find content. Do you find that with the Wolf Stand? You know, it kind of went the other way for me. When I started out, we would take on Thursdays the show would air on Monday. And Monday's show would come on and I would pray to the music gods that Thursday somebody's butt would be sitting in the interview chair in the station. And now it's like, the only issue I have now is, is that I take in the daytime, I don't, I don't produce my own show. So in order to have a producer, I have to be at the station. Um, I don't have an exterior producer anymore. So that limits me to people. There's a lot of musicians, let's face it, it's not a full-time gig anymore. Right. Right? So a lot of these people, they work Monday to Friday. And, you know, to get off on a Tuesday afternoon or an hour or two, there's not a lot of bosses out there that are that forgiving. Some are, but some aren't. So my biggest issue is getting people that are available to come in during the week. So what I'll say is somebody that's been in the studio before, um, I shot one studio, or one, one episode of my show in the studio, and everything else was remote. Uh, it's a great location to go. Um, you know, Ron that works with you is great. Uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, it's state of the art. I mean, let's call it what it is for a community radio station. They've got a lot of tools and a lot of doors. Yeah, we know we, we, we could certainly use some upgrades, but at the same time, um, an amazing, wonderful group of people. They're all volunteers. You know, I mean, there's everybody that works at that station all the time, and all the energy that they put into it is all on them. There's nobody that's giving them paychecks. Um, there's a couple people that get what we call like a, a, a gratuity, but these are people that are given up pretty much their entire day in order to do the show, and they do it five days a week. But people like me that do a one-hour show once a week, um, yeah, it's thank you for thank you for your show, but if it causes something, that's on you. So uh, Larry sounds like he's arguing. So we're actually behind us. Yeah. Just over our shoulders where the station is. Yeah, right over my head, right over my, my, my shoulder, yeah. And where we're sitting here right now, Pizza Town, yeah. where um, you know, Sheldon, Jim, the kids here have you know, they've really done a uh, some great work to put Laura Sacco on the map in terms of music, right? They do the Thursday night songwriting thing. So we uh, just looking over there. John Hines is here, Lori Little is here on Saturday, Tony yeah. Tremper has been here, Tony Brian Dusset who's down there has been here. Yeah. Um, how, how important it is, is it, I guess, to kind of have a location like this out here? Because, I mean, really, um, you know, we've been trying to build art, but that Halifax is what it is. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see Sackville kind of making a, a comeback. You know, um, we were talking about this earlier, actually, tonight when we were having supper. Um, the venues that are in this area now, um, if we want to consider go all the way into what they call Bedford now, which in 
my life growing up in this in this area. I always called it Rockingham, but you know we won't get too logistical crazy about it. But from say from Larry Utah out to Mount Uniac, you can find talent, you can find entertainment. Windsor now is you know like they're starting to pick back up. Dartmouth is getting back on the map, but Sackville we just Sackawa just started doing their music. And I was up there the other night to a jam, and it was it was off the charts, man. The the talent that came into that that building that night was just unbelievable. So I mean, and, and this is this is me interviewing you, so, but this is by no means Wayne attaching anything <laughs> to anything. But I know playing Halifax. Halifax is a nightmare for parking. I love playing downtown. It's terrible for parking. Yeah. Um, you know, look at two salacious. Nature and give your head a shake because it's crazy. There's a big parking lot out here. Yep. So the boys come and see people on Thursday night. There's, you know, nobody's going to come and give you a ticket. Nope. You can sit down. You can have a bite. Uh, we're in a nice little friendly atmosphere. Uh, we did sack the vital here what, last summer, two summers ago. Yep. And um, it just seems like you know there's always an energy around here, which is pretty cool. Well, this place in particular, pizza down here in Lower Sackville, um, it's has a mentality of, of sponsoring and fostering music in the community and just the sense of community. Um, there's things that they do that we'll never ever know about. You know, the owners are those kinds of people. They're 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 generous sometimes to a fault. But when it comes to music, um, they've never ever faltered. And even when things were rough and things were tough, they spent money to basically barricade this place up so that you could still come here and they still had an individual performer playing here. So, I mean, you can't beat that kind of, of support. You know, I mean, how many years did nobody want a band in their bar or in their establishment? All they wanted was a machine, you know? And now we're starting to get, you know, COVID wasn't a good thing, but it did teach us one thing. That's how much we love music. For sure. And and these are the folks. Okay, they're sponsoring your ball teams, your hockey teams, your yep. bowling teams, uh, you know, uh, they sponsor a lot of stuff, right? I, I'm looking back there. Here's the two guys that own the joint making your food, right? Yep. That says a lot about how much, you know, they put into this place, right? So anyway, come out to uh come out to Pizza Town. It's uh, right at the corner of uh Cobblewood and and uh, Glendale. Glendale. You can't miss a big pizza town sign. Um, so, I guess uh, I was honored. I was the first in studio interview of the year. I didn't know that until Thursday. Um, you got lucky. I was sick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and it was cool. We had a good time. Um, here's what I like about the Wolfstead. So, you get to go in there, and the first thing that happens is Ron says, Send me four minutes. Yeah. And so, I'm sitting there going, Okay, it's been a long time. So, I sent the four minutes. Oh, it was cool. We get to have a little chat about what those four tunes meant to me when we did that. And you do that with every artist. I try to. Um, you know, years ago, I, I heard a guy sing a song. It wasn't his song. It was actually a song by Bruce Gunther. And I heard this song, and it, it pretty much cut me in two. The song's called Fall, and it was about a guy that was coming in on a train, and he wanted to meet a family member. And it had been like 20, 25 years ago. To me, I mean, I'm getting mucked up about it now. Um, it spoke to me in my life and the relationship that I had with my father. And it sucked. But, you know, and it really did. My dad well, and I, one panel gets to my, another. My, my, my dad and I know, like, the truth of the matter is, my dad and I, we just didn't get along too much in life, probably. But um, that song cut right through me. And Bruce Jutro wrote the song. He was in an airport or a train station or something, and he seen this guy walk by. And he made this story up, and he wrote this song. And yet it cut me to the bone. So I like to figure out, I like to ask people about their music, because a lot of times what we think it's about has nothing to do with the song at all. That's a great point. Great point. But the main thing is, that it entertains us and it fills a place in our heart and in our body that we need to have. 
And uh, that's a great point because one of the songs that I picked was Love Guns by Kiss. And anybody that knows me knows I'm a huge Kiss fan. But the reason why I picked it is because I told you a story about being on Christopher Avenue with my friend Todd Zaney when I was about 10 years old, hearing the song for the first time, going, I want to be a drummer. And so that was that was pretty cool to kind of relive that memory. And, you know, as as I hear other people on the show, and I mean, everybody goes from, you know, Brian who sets always gets a smile, a million miles wide, everything's great, Brian's wrong. But then some people go on there and, and there's you know, a little more melancholy story. So um, do you get feedback from people from time to time about them liking that? that because that was probably, for me, the most enjoyable part of the interview when we did it. You know, if, if I could lie to you and say, yeah, all the time, but I'll be honest. Um, I don't think anybody's ever sent me an email saying whether or not they liked my show or they hated it or whatever. I, but the funny thing is, is that I run into people, places. Like my wife and I got in a cab one night, and the cab, I told the cab driver where we were going, and he, before he even moved the car, he turned around and looked at me and said, You that guy on the Wolfstead? And like, I'm in a random cab. We're in Truro, and this, this gentleman, I don't know, 70 years old or so, comes up to me and, and he says, thanks for what you do, buddy. I listen to your show every week. So that's the stuff, like, and, and you would probably agree with this, um, sound like all the kids that like, 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 but, um, so, you know, especially with what I do, you have instant gratification, deep gratification, depending upon what happens. So you can have days where it's just like, ah, not somebody else told me what I'm doing wrong. And then you can have something like what happened to me on Thursday night. I go to see Faye Dunn at the casino. Yeah. And a girl comes up and she goes, you're Sean from Barstool with Man Talk. Can I get a picture? Okay. And then the next thing you know, two more people. And I took five pictures. I mean, you know, it was no Trevor Park Boys Beatles. Like, you know, but, you know, it was like, that was pretty fun, right? Yeah. Um, and I had a pretty, you know, so so day with a couple of people online. So when you do get that type of thing happen, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. I mean, and now the other thing too, and in my own defense, I suppose is I do a lot of music festivals, and I have been doing music festivals since 2011, I think it was. And so the amount of people, and I do the odd benefit once in a while. Um, but so I've met a lot of people through that as well, not so much. Radio station, but the radio station certainly doesn't hurt it. Right. You know, um, but yeah, and you're right, it's, it's it's always cool when somebody comes up to you that you've never seen before or met before and they come up and say, hey, I don't do. It, it's funny because when I was in minor hockey, it was always, oh no, here comes another parent that's going to tell me their kid gets you know, messed over, right? Now I find, um, and it's really hard because a lot of people don't know this about me. I come across as this like, eh, you know, really open. I'm not an outgoing personality. So I, I would, you know, uh, for starters, I get diagnosed with ADD about seven years ago, which my whole life made sense once I found that out. Um, but I'm actually an introvert who does a lot to fake. Like I'm a really good actor, and you guys might not have known that. So, um, so you know, to, to always be on, and when somebody comes up, and I'm not a hugger either. So you guys know how to hug at all. And Wayne's like, hey, give me a hug. And so it's like when somebody comes up and wants to give you a hug and I'm grimacing, but I'm sort of smiling the same. It's really hard. You have to um, be on all the time because that person, you know, you might have had 10 idiots. Yeah. And that's the one person. And if you're an idiot to that one person, they're going to remember it for a long time. And they're going to tell everybody that they know what they get idiot you are. You know, um, you're right, though, about always having to be on. Um, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you have to be the best that you can be. Not that you should have to really fight to do that anyway, because it should be just your nature, but you're right. You, you can't have a bad day in the public. You can't, because you really don't know who you're telling on. Okay? Because that person could be somebody that goes to every single music festival that you're at or their sister, or their brother, or their daughter does. And they go home and they tell whoever, what a friggin' jerk that was. You know, it it puts a stain on you, and it, but it, it also teaches you that that's the way you should be treating people anyway. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, 
everybody has bad days. I mean, you, you can't help it. And um, but here's the really cool thing, right? Like when we get back to the music side of things, right? Um, so I did a post today. I uh, I was very lucky that I had this weekend off, and I don't get many weekends off. So Thursday I went out and I saw Pain Done. Uh, Friday my son's group and a bunch of kids did a. They did, yeah, they did a. It was like a hip hop show, which was phenomenal. They had a great crowd. The thing that blew me away the most is how supportive these kids were of each other. And then I saw Silverado on Saturday night, and I'm sitting there going, okay, buddy JD, right, JD. Um, and I got to see my buddy uh, Randy Chase on who hadn't played drums in four years. And believe me, I, I told you the story in the whole thing. I didn't touch a set of drums for five years from '95 to 2000. Some might say, yeah, it's still it's got a hold still, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, Randy hadn't played in four years, and that was the first time we played, so it was wow. great to see him back at it. Um, it was great to see the different types of music, but it was also great to see yeah. the support that all these people were getting from, you know, from the people that were there. Yeah, diversity is, you know, I love it. You know, I mean, it, it, it says a lot about you that you can go see Elvis one night, you can go see Hip Hop another night, and then the next night after that, you're going to see Country. Don't give me too much credit. Cause what you got you got to go ask somebody to serve when I went and saw Jazz one night down in Halifax. It wasn't pretty. So don't give me too much credit. Listen, the only thing you need to know about Jazz is that somebody's going to make a mistake and they're going to go from there. Well, what does it do? What does it do? Exactly, right? Um, anyway, and so I think what we'll do is we're going to get our uh, new uh, executive producer, Melissa, to give us a hand here. We're going to end segment one, right. take a little break. I think in segment two, uh, we might be able to have some people shout out questions if they have any questions for you. So uh, we'll be back. Remember, Sean, to Sean after this.